Welcome back. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Now to our first uh, conversation this morning. A uh, new research published yesterday or this week, earlier this week, in the United Kingdom's Guardian uh, confirmed that all types of hormonal contraceptives carry a small increased risk of breast cancer. Yes, you heard it right, breast cancer. The research establishing a link with uh, progesterone uh, progestogen pills uh, for the first time was published in the PLOS Medicine publication. A data analysis by the University of Oxford researchers established that the use of progestogen is associated with a 20 to 30 percent higher risk of breast cancer. Now, this builds on previous work showing that the use of the combined contraceptive pill, which contains oestrogen and uh, progestogen, uh, is associated with a small increase in the risk of developing breast cancer that declines after its stoppage. Uh, joining us to provide some insight into this is Dr. Neso Chi, who is a New York City area based physician, health expert, media contributor, health writer. Uh, she's not only a practicing um, internist and civil surgeon designated by the United States Department of Homeland Security and the U.S. Uh, Citizenship and Immigration Services, but she's also a medical advisor. Uh, Dr. Neso Chi is the CEO of the Internal Medicine Private Practice. Dr. Nesochi LLC and health media consulting company, uh, Supermodel MD LLC USA. I don't know, Americans may call you Nesochi, I'm sure. <laughs> but it's Nesochi, welcome. Nice to have you again. Um, albeit uh, on for a very, very chilling topic. Now, hormone pills, hormone contraceptives are used by women in a lot of cases. I mean, recently I was talking to uh, a, a lady who was uh, recommended to use some hormonal pills to stop or reduce her um, uh, 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 menstrual flow. Um, this, is, this is quite worrying, uh, Dr. Nesochi. Tell us a bit uh, of the background to this. Dr. Nesochi, are you there, please? Can you hear us? All right, since we have a, a, a problem with, with the network connection, I will try to get across to her in a bit. Messi, it's uh, quite a worrying, worrying sign, you know, or quite a worrying uh, information, rather, that this, you know, uh, um, report has come out. And uh, we'll get, hopefully get some context, you know. But women use, use these pills, you know, contraceptives from time to time. And I have many, you know, female friends who, you know, confide in me from time to time. And... Um, there's a, a friend of mine who had a situation and they said they had to just get some contraceptives to control her. And I mean, if you hear that there's a risk of breast cancer, that's worrying. Uh, very very worrying. And, and, and we're hoping that, uh, you know, we have this connection. Uh, I think that for us here in Nigeria and in most parts of Africa, the culture of, you know, paying attention to the health and, uh, you know, our body's not quite, you know, a priority. Mm -hmm. Uh, not necessarily because it's not that what we should do, but over time, it's not just the culture, it's not the mm -hmm. practice, because mm -hmm. what you practice becomes a lifestyle. But, I mean, we're being prompted to take, you know, a short break, and as soon as we return, we're able, you know, to resolve all of the connectivity issues and have, you know, our, our doctor join us to give us, you know, more insight to the issue. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. All right, uh, we're glad to have back with us uh, Dr. Neso Chi, who is, um, of course, our guest on the first uh, segment of our conversation this morning. We had a bit of a connection issue with Dr. Neso Chi, but she is back. And uh, we're looking at, of course, um, some research that has come through indicating uh, that uh, there's a risk of um, the users of hormonal contraceptives uh, uh, getting or being infected with the uh, affected by breast cancer. Um, Dr. Nesuchi, uh, forgive me for, for mixing it up, uh, mm -hmm. but you're, you're the expert here. So uh, just give us some uh, some background to all of this. So just unbundle it for us. I know I gave an introduction, but that is nothing compared to what you can, you can, you can. So shed some light on what this research is talking about. Sure thing. So this research basically filled some knowledge gaps, um, some looming questions that we had before um, in the scientific community in regards to oral contraceptive use and the risk of breast cancer. So just to lay the framework, 
in the past, there have been studies done linking um, breast cancer or increasing the risk of breast cancer with the use of combined oral contraceptives. Combined meaning that these um, oral contraceptives include both the hormone estrogen and progestogen. Now, they wanted to really look at what the effect or impact would be when we're focusing on just the oral contraceptive containing progestogen, just one hormone um, within the oral contraceptive that did not have estrogen included. Would that, have that, would that still have that same impact and have that uh, small increased risk of breast cancer when we're analyzing and looking at um, data of those just using this kind of oral contraceptive pill. So what did these researchers do? They analyzed data um, from about 10,000 women who are under the age of 50 who were diagnosed um, with an invasive breast cancer and about 18,000 women who did not have it. And they found that 44% of women with breast cancer and 39% of those who did not have it had been prescribed um, an oral contraceptive pill um, in about three years prior. So they did some analyses of the data and really looked at two things. What would the absolute risk of breast cancer be? And what would the relative risk of breast cancer be in these um, individuals? Absolute risk looks at really an actual probability of an outcome in a specific group. So what they found was that the absolute risk of breast cancer with oral contraceptive use in those um, between the ages of 16 to 20 years of age was one in 12,500. Um, in the age range of 35 to 39 years of age, they found that that absolute risk was um, 33 um, in about 12,500. So they then looked at the relative risk of um, this kind of oral contraceptive use. And what they found was that this oral contraceptive use may increase the chance of developing uh, breast cancer by 20 to 30% compared to the risk you already started with. So when they're saying that all hormone contraceptives um, may um, increase the risk by a small amount, um, all meaning that we've now in the past, in the past we've studied um, the dual uh, contraceptives, meaning the combined oral contraceptive with estrogen, progestogen, and now we're only focusing on progestogen, um, which is basically a key hormone that is used to regulate menstruation and pregnancy. And when we have this um, hormonal um, contraceptive, it's usually in the form when we're doing the progestogen only of an IUD, an intrauterine device, um, contraceptive injections, and what is sometimes popularly known as the mini pill. So now this gap in our knowledge has really been filled. But with that said, there is still more room for further investigation because there was um, some limitation to the data that they were studying. So um, I'd like to ask you, the risk is universal. Uh, I mean, if it's a universal concept or issue, and we're looking at Nigeria now and Africa, especially when you look at you know the health practice and behavior over time, do you think that mm. Nigerians are also uh, would be disadvantaged, higher risk? Well, you have to look and take a full picture into perspective, as there are various factors that we know about. Um, that can increase one's risk of uh, breast cancer. And there are other risk factors that no one has um, any control of. So factors that we can't control include your age. The older you are, the higher your risk is. Um, certain genetic mutations, your family history, um, a personal history. If you've had breast cancer before, chances of having another breast cancer in the future increase. Um, the risk factors that you can control, and we have to put this in the context of those um, living in Nigeria would be one, um, certain hormones, taking certain hormones. So depending on the hormonal contraceptive treatment that is used by women um, in Nigeria, that needs to be taken into perspective. 
not being physically active. That's another risk factor that um, you can control um, that can increase one's risk. The more sedentary that you are, your risk is increased. And also drinking alcohol, smoking cigarettes, that's another risk factor as well. So we're looking really at the big picture. The big picture being what may one's individual risk um, in Nigeria be? That would be a question that's best answered by having um, a conversation with your healthcare provider um, and discussing what your individual risk is. Um, does family history come to play um, for a patient here? Does um, ge do genetic mutations come to come into play? Is there an issue with um, what we call lifestyle modifications, the choices that we make on a day-to-day -day basis, like cigarette smoking or um, ingesting and drinking a lot of alcohol? So what typically will happen is that you're going to have a discussion about risk benefit um, analysis. Basically, your doctor will take a look at what are the risks and what are the benefits of potential oral contraceptive use, given the big picture, given your overall risk for uh, breast cancer. Uh, does this, because we see here in the 30% to 40% increase in risk, uh, I'm also seeing the study that had was conducted in 2018 where those who took the combined pill had a, about a 50% risk uh, increase. Um, uh, are, we, are we therefore saying now, uh, based on these studies, that uh, women need not take any of these pills, either it, uh, the progesterone or the combined pill? Are we saying that women shouldn't take the pills at all, uh, have hormonal treatment, or are we saying uh, you know, it, it shouldn't be taken on a prolonged basis, or what exactly is this research and report going to help us do now? Yeah, Dr. Nessa, are you there? Okay, if, if you can hear me, Dr. Nessa, based on this research, what is it um, suggesting women do? Is it saying that women should um, cease taking these uh, hormonal pills uh, contraceptives, or is it saying that um, it shouldn't be taken over a long period of time? Um, I didn't hear the full question, but from what I heard, you're asking um, whether or not the study is saying that women should stop taking oral contraceptive pills that have progestogen only. So if that's the question, um, that's not what this study is saying. I think the study is really um, stating that we now understand that all kinds of oral contraceptives come with some level of minimal increased risk for breast cancer. Now, you have to be aware that um, oral contraceptive use um, is not only used to uh, prevent pregnancy, they're also used for various treatments of various conditions. So a woman may be using um, an oral contraceptive for uh, treatment of endometriosis or heavy menstrual bleeding. So again, full picture, what is the context of the use of um, the oral contraceptive use? Do the risks outweigh the benefit? Um, is it to one's advantage to continue using that? And again, that is only a discussion that can be had with the patient and doctor to determine if it is of the best interest of the patient to continue on using the oral contraceptive um, film. I have an example of um, a, a drug called uh, tranexamic acid, um, which is, is also something recommended to women, um, you know, especially if they're experiencing a heavy flow. Uh, you know, so are we talking about things like that? I've also heard, like I said, um, some, 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 you know, uh, medication that was recommended to a friend of mine who um, they said they had to really like slow down, even seize totally uh, the flow ahead of uh, some sort of procedure. So you look at things like maybe tranexamic acid, which some women take very regularly because of the, the amount of the flow. Is, are we looking at things like that? Yeah, so we're really looking at the, um, the uh, benefit of what these hormonal treatments um, can give to an individual, can give to a woman. So if you are using the oral contraceptive to help slow down heavy menstrual flow, again, you're looking at the 
um, patient, you're looking at the individual to determine is it of benefit to her to continue using this um, for um, decreasing the heaviness of the menstrual uh, flow that she has in the context of what the risk would be for her. Put it in perspective, the younger a patient is, the lower their risk is going to be. So for most um, patients who are on any of these um, uh, progestogen-only pills or oral contraceptive pills, um, the doctor is really going to look at what the um, overall risk is going to be based on the patient's um, set of family history, um, her social history, and other factors to deem if it is of the greatest benefit for her to continue with it. But to answer your question, these oral contraceptive treatments, again, they have a wide range of um, what it can um, allow in regards to treatment for various um, gynecological uh, problems and conditions. The progesterone only pills, but um, the combined pills I was asking about earlier with the oestrogen and the progesterone uh, uh, together, what about that? So the combined pi um, pills, um, these have been the more popular forms of um, oral contraceptives um, over the course of many, many years um, with both estrogen and progestogen. Again, oral contraceptives in general can be used, um, whether it's the progestogen only or the combined pills for um, treatment of various gynecological uh, conditions. So what we really need to know is that we've had an abundance of research on the combined for um, many years. What we're looking at now really is what the progestogen pills um, can afford one in regards to um, risk. And we're seeing that the risk is pretty much at the same level, um, whether or not it's the combined or it is the um, individual pill with just the progestogen. Hmm. Okay, um, we, we hear that uh, uh, it's been noted that, you know, the, the study, because you talked about family history, did not uh, consider uh, family history of breast cancer to determine whether it affected the, those um, uh, patients who were sampled in the research. Um, uh, so just I want you to talk about that again. If this study did not take that into account, is it possible that maybe they may not have gotten it right because those people may have had a family history of a breast cancer and not necessarily uh, have, had, have had breast cancer because of the increased use or high use of these, um, these uh, hormonal contraceptives? So the researchers um, did make note of that, that that was one major limitation of the study, not um, putting into account family history. Again, um, there are those risk factors like family history that one just cannot control. So if you do have a very significant family history, that can um, significantly increase one's risk of breast cancer. So if that is not accounted for in the study, um, it doesn't mean that we're just dumping the study and we're not taking some um, learning points away from it. It just means that there's room for further investigation. There is um, more room for more studies to basically determine if um, one can actually um, look for uh, confounding factors um, like family history and account for that in another study. So it's really um, just a call for more research to make sure that there are minimal limitations when we're looking at um, a study such as this one. Hmm. I think this, this presents as a, an opportunity to um, educate ourselves uh, again, about the the issue of breast cancer. So, if just just to go over the uh, the risk factors and what we may need to do to to test themselves are the initial uh, steps and measures they have to take to you know check themselves for those who are watching. So, for those who are watching, I think the um, takeaway is to have the routine preventive health evaluations um, when it comes to breast health, and that is really in the form of mammography. So typically, um, the recommendations are that starting from the age of 40, a woman should have a mammogram. Um, that is essentially an x-ray of the breast. And these uh, routine tests will really allow for one to determine if there are 
any um, concerns or issues with a potential breast cancer. But that said, um, every woman should also be aware of some of the potential signs and symptoms of breast cancer so that they could bring it to their doctor's attention if they ever um, recognize any of these um, signs or symptoms. So some of the red flags to be aware of, if you notice a breast lump or lesion, um, if you notice some kind of uh, lump in the underarm um, area and the axillary area, um, if you notice um, basically um, any kind of um, expression of fluid um, from the nipple area outside of one lactating, when one is not breastfeeding, that is not um, a normal finding. If you notice certain changes to the texture of the skin of the breast, something um, typically known as peau de hange, um, which is just um, the skin on the breast looking like the skin of an orange, certain changes like this should be a red flag for one to um, have an evaluation of their doctor sooner than later. With that said, the key really is prevention, and prevention really comes um, by means of mammography and the routine screenings. Hmm. Dr. Nesochi, uh, thank you so much for your time and uh, for giving us a, a real, real uh, a deep insight into this research and also into the general issue of breast cancer. We look forward to having you again uh, pretty soon on The Breakfast. Thank you for having me. All right, we have more conversations ahead. Of course, we'll look at the International Table Tennis Federation rankings. Also, a review of the upcoming qualifiers uh, for the African Cup of Nations involving Nigeria's Super Eagles. Please stay with us.